Good to see you, Tom. You propose a system where a panel of three outside arbitrators decides whether any given post violates rules uh, on the major platform. And I believe if an account has three posts in violation, it gets suspended for a year. I I'm trying to boil down your, your whole column uh, I into a couple of sentences. But why do you think that this is the way to do it? And are you worried about too much kind of panel regulation of speech? Well, John, as you said, uh, there's no good answer. And this is a better answer than what we heard out of Zuckerberg or heard out of Dorsey or heard out of Trump last week. The Zuckerberg view was, hey, not me. Uh, social media platforms shouldn't be in the middle of this at all. Dorsey, it was, yes, it should be me. And social media platforms should be the arbiter. Trump was, you better not label me, and uh, basically trying to intimidate social media platforms to uh, stay the hell out of the way. So the question is, what is the, the best answer? Uh, I basically propose a fourth way, which is, who should be the arbiter of truth? Arbiters should be the arbiter of truth. And I, I base, my basic premise is, all views should be aired, but all views should also be subject to airing. And what I mean by that is airing arbitration independent review and uh, lay out a, a 12 element process. You summarize some of it. Uh, but the question is, what do we do to have some kind of sensible independent system here where we don't have the wild west of social media with no accountability, uh, but at the same time do not concentrate more power in the social media platforms, mm -hmm. letting them be the sole determiners of what's objectionable speech or not. Now, Tom, you were kind enough to, to send me a, a draft of this, and I spent some time you know, looking through it, thinking about it. First I thought, boy, uh, a layer of regulation and people deciding stuff on speech. But then I thought, okay, well, companies have boards. Uh, and, and they're constituted a certain way, and there are rules that certain types of companies of a certain size uh, have to have boards constituted in a certain way. And so, you know, maybe this makes a lot of sense. Maybe we're in an era now where social media platforms have such power and uh, the speech of, of certain people uh, on those platforms has such an effect that there needs to be a structure around it. Is that really where we are? Uh, I think you've said that well. I, the premise here is uh, Section 230, uh, the Communications Decency Act, which got a lot of play last week. And that's the provision that gives a liability shield to social media platforms so that third party speech on those platforms, they can't be held liable for. And that's an incredibly valuable liability shield because it shelters them from what could be millions or even billions of dollars of damage in terms of uh, objectionable, defamatory, wrongful speech on their platforms. And my view is there's a, there's a precedent for this. Broadcasters got exclusive licenses to speak uh, when there were very few ways to get your views out electronically. But in return for that, they had certain public interest obligations, including a fairness doctrine, which basically set up a process whereby it made it uh, possible to challenge a broadcaster whose broadcasts were unfair. Now, you had about as big a chance of getting held accountable under the Fairness Doctrine as you did being hit by a meteor in your backyard. But the existence of the process itself brought some degree of accountability to broadcasters who got that exclusive valuable license. Well, here social media platforms are getting a very valuable liability shield. And the question is, should they have some kind of process in the public interest so we can police objectionable speech on those platforms? You have to pay for that. And there's another precedent, which is auction spect spectrum auctions or spectrum fees, where today valuable spectrum is paid for by the recipients of that spectrum. I propose some kind of tax or fee on the largest social media platforms to pay for this arbitration process. But this isn't unprecedented. It's a way to keep the government out of deciding what is objectionable speech, but in return for something the government conveys, having to have some kind of public interest process that you're responsible for.